Really? I didn't hit the mute button. But thanks for the heads up, chat. Love you, mean it, chat. You are the best for keeping me straight. Hi. I'm Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at ClimateViewer.com, and it's another Tuesday news day. Um, I'm going to do all the geoengineering and weather modification news that are not in the lamestream media. Um, skipped last week because I've been busy working on my studio, putting in that extra time. Um, feels real good to get outside and flex those muscles and get that sunlight. Um, and we're going to get into this immediately. So, uh, dial in details are in the description and uh, here we go. So for those who've never heard of it, and I went to, uh, the conference in 2018, the American Meteorological Society has what's known as the Pl Conference on Planned and Inadvertent Weather Modification. They just published uh, this one that just happened back in January. Um, so it's the first link in the details. You'll be able to jump into that. And um, what I would suggest is just go through these and you can see the videos from them. So they have things like cloud seeding, um, studies on climate impacts of aerosol injections into clouds of the atmosphere. You can click on that, um, downloads. They got a video here and you can actually hit play and go through that entire thing and see a whole bunch of people really bored on zoom talking about a whole bunch of science stuff. Um, but these weather modification conferences are right at the you know the bone layer of the the weather modification industry um this is where all the latest science is going to happen and um they talk about a whole lot of different things you know what i should have had this exit ramps article up damn it damn it i had I, I have this in my email um anyway so yeah, dig into this, uh, good stuff all through it. And, um, maybe we'll actually get into some of these videos and respond, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you, unless you're a nerd and you're really into the science, um, probably going to bore you to tears, very insightful at times, very boring at times, but the 23rd conference on planned and inadvertent weather modification just happened back in, uh, J um, January and they just published it. Uh, within the last two weeks. So dig in. Um, does the government control the weather? News 18. This conspiracy theory will give you chills. And of course, they start out talking about geoengineering, um, a technique that has intrigued humans for more than five decades now, but then they go on to talk about art. Whenever these conspiracies see the light of day, the first organization that is under the radar is HARP, or the High Frequency Active Aurora Research Program in Gakona, Alaska. Um, you know, uh, these devices heat up a small amount of air above the site. I mean, whoever wrote this literally put five minutes worth of effort into it. This is clearly just clickbait from a news organization or as you, uh, YouTube would put it reputable sources. Um, absolutely zero effort put into this shame on you. News 18 pathetic. Um, in your graphics world, man, this is, this is interesting. I'm probably going to get this book just because I'm our, I'm an artist. I love art. My daughter's an artist. And we talked about geoengineering, the planet after geoengineering by design earth, a cautionary tale of human intervention in the climate crisis, a graphic novel with near monochrome in illustrations. Um, and you can read all about it. You can listen to the article, but they've got some pretty good drawings in here. Um, I'm going to bring this up to full screen just so you can see it. They got some art here, but, um, some nice little illustration. You really can't blow this up, can you? Stupid website. Um, but you can see like drilling under the ice, uh, some CO2 sequestration, underground cities. Um, I love fascinating art about, you know, what the future could hold. Um, there's, a, there's a heart beam. Um, 
bubble cities floating on the ocean, a fake backdrop of what nature should look like. And everybody lives on one side of it right there. Um, it's just fascinating. I mean, great artwork, uh, pretty, pretty cool sky river about steering the rivers in the sky and what that would look like in the future. Um, very interesting article um, to say sulfur storm, Mount Pinatubo erupting, people deploying sulfur, living in bubbles to stay away from the acid rain. Um, it, I mean, hella interesting dust cloud, uh, you know, about blocking out sunlight, people having to live in space, living on these weird freaking things under domes and all of that sort of stuff. Um, very fascinating. I'm, I'm totally fascinated by this. Um, but you know what's sad? It's it's probably pretty realistic. Um, a lot of the you know concepts in this, you know, artists tend to think out of the box, and I think that this one's right on the money. Um, so yeah, great looking book. Uh, check it out. The Planet After Geoengineering by Design Earth. I'm probably gonna get it, and uh, if I do, I'll I'll show it off on the stream. Um, from flooding Death Valley to space mirrors, geoengineering ideas to combat climate change. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much says it all. Uh, you can dig into this one. And then, of course, the first video up from a reputable source on YouTube, CNBC, why Bill Gates is funding solar geoengineering research, a chemical cloud to cool the earth. I covered this uh, quite a while ago, um, but of course they, pop that right in the beginning of their article. Um, and then, you know, putting orbit, you know, orbital mirrors to creating more clouds over the ocean. This is one of those it's, uh, you know, ocean iron fertilization, um, making the Arctic ice more reflective with glass beads. This is one of those puff pieces for people who've never heard the word geoengineering in their life. Um, but we'll move on from there. Is it time to take sun dimming tech seriously? Experts disagree. In fact, the article goes on to talk about um, you know, the idea that people want to actually sign a geoengineering non-use agreement. And of course, I had all of this up, but you know, it's like, hey, you want to keep reading? Uh, you better sign up that thing there. Um, paywalls and sign walls, they're just trash trash ass websites um but anyway geoengineering 2040 i don't like anything with the titles in them i mean whether it's agenda 21 agenda 2030 geoengineering 2040 uh owning the weather in 2025 um whenever people start throwing dates around in their titles i'm all already like you know the hair on the back of my neck stands up um Moving on. Why we should use climate engineering by McNally Institute. Um, because you want to control the weather worldwide. That's why. Um, you can't control the thermostat in most people's houses. Uh, you sure as hell can't control the atmosphere on a worldwide scale. Geoengineering to re reduce global catastrophic risk. Uh, published May 29th, um, just came out. Um, my main point is positively shaping the global governance of geoengineering is a potentially effective way of reducing global catastrophic risk. But isn't geoengineering dangerous? And this is something you're going to see time and time again. They come up with these articles and they say, wait a minute. Isn't geoengineering dangerous? Because when I started this over a decade ago, that was not the conversation. And I kept pointing out all these reasons why geoengineering, hella dangerous. That's why it should not happen. Um, if cloud seeding was invented in 1946 and they're still trying to prove today that cloud seeding is effective and produce, has um, regularly reproducible effects, um, what they call scientific efficacy. They haven't been able to do that in over 70 years. But suddenly geoengineering 
they're going to be able to make it safe and effective when David Keith himself says many tens of thousands of people will die as a result of geoengineering. And then there's all these other reasons why it's dangerous. Um, so you're going to see a lot of these articles do this. Isn't geoengineering dangerous? Yes, geoengineering in literature, most often called climate engineering, is the deliberate manipulation of the planet's climate. It's easy to see how this can be dangerous. Although geoengineering poses risks of its own, the topic should not be simply discarded because it interacts with global catastrophic risk in numerous ways. In order to better understand geoengineering, let's look at how we might do it. So I hate it when they do this because this is reframing. This is mind control. This is perception management. This is how you mold the minds. You mind control a populace. You say, yes, your gut tells you it's dangerous, but here's why we should do it anyway. Follow along as we get into that. Um, these people are, you know, they, they always do this. It's a mind control thing. Um, it's just too uh, way too common um from the utrecht university manipulation of the climate start getting used to it i mean they're just like these these dudes just be like in your face your face man um so manipulation of the climate start getting used to it um and you know they basically say you know it's gonna happen it's gonna happen whether you like it or not so you might as well get used to it. Um, all links and details. Please feel read. Feel free to read these articles. Um, share them with people. That's the whole point of this. And please share this but video. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, I mean, come on. I blow up for you people. I I do's the work. Hit that subscribe button. Especially if you're over on Rumble, BitChute, or Odyssey, hit the subscribe button there and then come over, hold your nose, hit that YouTube subscribe button and share this video because it greatly helps my channel out and helps me grow um, and get this news out to people because we're winning. Um, and you can always support the channel by going to connect.climateviewer.com where you can see the links to my BitChute, my Odyssey, my Rumble, and all of my other social medias and ways to support the channel. Back to the show. Um, moving along. Uh, now, this is in Austrian. I didn't even bother um, translating it because I just really wanted to point out this little infographic in the middle. Um, the different types of geoengineering. They've got carbon capture and storage, carbon capture and usage, carbon dioxide removal, and then solar radiation management. Oh, yeah. And uh, like Bold as a Lion um, saying, please gently smush the like button if you haven't already. I mean, if you like it, you like it. So you might as well smush it, right? A little, a little, little gentle smush, a little, little touch, a little smushy. Um, so three different types of carbon removal, carbon capture and storage, carbon capture and usage, carbon dioxide removal. Oh yeah. And then the one that's going to kill everybody, solar radiation management. Um, now, why is this important? Because Yale professor calls for more research on carbon capture, cutting solar radiation to reduce impact of climate change. So they're still going to say, um, yo, we should do both of these things. We should suck CO2 out of the atmosphere and we should block out sunlight. Um, but this whole carbon capture scheme, it's about that money. Manufacturelli NK media or something like that. Manufacturelink.com.au. Um, carbon capture and storage market 2022. Quantitative analysis, opportunistic scope, types and applications with Tijan, Hexel, Torre Industries, and SGL Group. Want to know who's getting involved? Follow that money. Um, details, overview of carbon capture and stored market insights for 2022 and, uh, get the sample report right now. 
um, you know, get a sample PDF of carbon capture and storage market um, because, you know, key competitors in the global carbon capture and storage market are blow it up website that actually blows up properly. Babcock, Babcock and Wilcox, um, NG, uh, GE Power, the Lend Group, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, Air Products and Chemicals, Air Products and Chemicals, creepy, Acre Solutions, Amec, Foster Wheeler, Chevron, Fluor, Hitachi, NetPower, Schlumberger, Shell, Siemens, Sato Stat Oil, and Sulzer. Um, and then the major product types covered pre-combustion, industrial, oxy firing, and post-combustion, oil and gas, iron and steel, chemical processing, power generation. The idea that all of these can go and, you know, Max Bliss in the chat. Everybody holler at my boy Max Bliss right now. Max, you got to come back on and do a video, man. We got to do another interview. Um, I'm going to like, I, now that Max is in chat, I just want to say this. Um, I've been considering doing like the Max Bliss Minute because Max, even though his YouTube channel got deleted because of a copyright strike from Dane Wigington of Geoengineering Watch. Oh, there's the porn bots. I said it. I did it. Incoming porn bots. Oh, God. Here they go. Boom. Unwanted commercial content of spam. Go away with you. Bad. You are so bad. Bots. Uh, mods. Handle it. Kill the bots. Kill all the bots. You. Go away with you. Bad bots. Dirty whore bots. All right. Much better. Um. But I want to do the Max Bliss Minute and like cover, you know, because Max sends me um, really sciencey papers and Max is an old timer like me. So the longer you're you're studying this topic, the more you're going to get familiar with the terminology, the more you're going to dig very deeply into these sorts of topics. Um, so as as a result of that, Max sends me some really good ones. Um, and what I want to do is, you know, start really covering those. Um, you know, kind of like how Bill O'Reilly has the O'Reilly minute on, uh, what's his name's, uh, Glenn Beck's show. He's only on there for like, you know, five, 10 minutes, but Hey, Max bliss. That's my, my brother from another mother. And, um, if you don't know about him, you missed it. And, uh, it's a it's a damn shame that he lost well over uh, twelve thousand subs because Dane Wigington uh, copyright striked him re-uploading a video Dane had made, and after a phone call with Dane saying, "Hey, look, man, Max is on the same team. We're all on the same team, right? Take this the strike back." Uh, Dane said, "Uh, no, Jim, I'm not going to." And I said, dude, he literally linked to your original video. He gave you full credit. Please. No. I am asshole. I am controller of all things. You do not use my content. I will strike you with great vengeance and throw my lawyer at you. Um, and that's why I maintain Dane Wigington, big asshole. And uh, whenever he stole my patent list and I raised a fuss about it, his lawyer got in touch with me. Dane Wigington, fuck you. For Max Bliss on, my, on his behalf, from me to you, fuck you. Fuck Dane Wigington. All right. Anyway, moving along. Love you, Max. I hope, I hope you don't mind that I did that because I'm still mad seven years later over what he did to you. Um... But this is not a democracy um, and solar geoengineering and democracy, not really, uh, you know, working out too well together. And as you can see here, this is a this is a fresh off the publishing block. And in it, some scientists suggest that it might be possible to reflect a portion of incoming sunlight back into space to reduce its thing. 
uh, climate impacts. Others argue that such solar radiation management, geoengineering, is inherently incompatible with democracy. In this article, we reject this incompatibility argument. Um, reject it all you want, but let's be real. Do you think there's going to be a freaking vote on whether or not they legalize global governance of and deployment of geoengineering? Let me know in the comments, because I don't believe that is ever going to happen. There is no compatibility between geoengineering, climate engineering, climate intervention, and freaking democracy. Your, your opinion does not matter. They will study your opinion. They will try to figure out how to mind control you to uh, brainwash you into believing that it's better than the alternative, that global warming is so dangerous that even though this will kill people, we should still do it. But voting, democracy, and geoengineering, I don't care who the hell these people are. Um, they're, they're, they're out of their freaking mind. So solar geoengineering and democracy are incompatible despite what, uh, uh, JB Horton, JL Reynolds, HJ Buck, and all the rest of these fools, uh, wrote, um, completely incompatible moving along now on to cloud seeding news. I found this interesting video posted May 22nd, 2022 of cloud seeding by the military back in 1971. Um, I know, man, me and Max went, for those who don't know, Max and I went to, uh, the weather mod, uh, the EPA hearing. And, uh, I believe it's still at climateviewer.com slash EPA like that and it'll kick you right to it so it's just climateviewer.com slash epa and uh you can come over here and actually see where we went to washington dc and the epa hearing on jet engine pollution and uh this is this is us together right here at the very get-go um i'll just play the video good lord <laughs> South Carolina, I'm a citizen. Um, agencies. I began to notice this daily and this greatly troubled me. I started to photograph and film the sky now for four years. Barely a day goes by without seeing various contrails, some thick, spreading, but most alarming is watching spurts within contrails, some uh, uh, watching and then watching the sky blotted out. Subsequently, I wanted to learn more and became an avid researcher and a passionate environmentalist. Now, I want you to hear Bags drop the freaking hammer on him at the end, because it's priceless. The notion that the climate science is settled is often repeated over and over by interested stakeholders, such as those looking for lucrative funding in the burgeoning climate change arena, be it academics, politicians, or entrepreneurs looking for success or to get rich, or more darkly, hoping to implement a one-world government system. Climate has always had natural variability and weather extremes. However, these days, some weather extremes can be stimulated with technology. It is appropriate, is it appropriate to reassess the anthropogenic global warming theory and replace it with climate change is man-made by using covert weather and climate modification technology known as geoengineering for geopolitical ends. We do not need to be scientists to observe the sky and see the obvious negative effects aviation is having and research the spiraling health impacts. Just start looking up and wake up. We do not consent to the use of weather and climate modification 
or the despotic New World Order. Boom! Oh, <laughs> Drop the mic! Oh! Oh, shit! I, just, I had to put my headphones on. Oh, my God. It's just, dude. Uh, when, I, when, he, when he said that, I, I damn near died. I was like, oh, baby. Oh, baby. It was priceless. So you, can, you guys can check that out. Um, I'll, I'll drop the link in chat real quick. If you guys aren't familiar with that, yeah, we went to the EPA and we gave them hell. Um, the people versus the Kim trollers um, at the US EPA in 2015, over seven years ago. Um, but now you know, for those who don't, in, that are going to watch this on other channels or aren't familiar with Max Bliss, that's who I'm talking about. That's my that's my homeboy. Um, <laughs> for him to drop the New World Order thing at the end, bro, I damn near died. Damn near died. Okay, so where were we? Making money on carbon capture, democracy, geo. All right, cloud seeding. So this is um from the Associated Press, and it says here uh, August 13th, 1971 story. Texas Air Force Rainmakers. Now look at this. Um. You got a WC-130, and that is a JATO, um, J-A-T-O, silver iodide fl Oh, shit, I'm not even showing it. Let me let me back this up. Uh, this is this is the thing about live stuff. Um, so that's the JATO racks. That's the WC-130s before. Those are silver iodide flare racks being mounted on the side of a WC-130. Um, and this is how the U.S. military controlled the weather back in 1970. Now, what's interesting about this is, this is 1971, and this is at the exact same time that Operation Popeye was going on. And it's further confirmation of photos I had of Operation Popeye, which is the weather warfare going on in Vietnam. What I did not know was the United States military was also trying to control the weather over Texas um, in 1971 at the same time. Um, so here you can see them, you know, aloft and sprinkling their little, you know, cloud sparkles to make it rain. Um, United States Air Force WC-130 with JATO rack. Um, now, like I said, this is confirmation of what I already had, which was, uh, and there's no audio with this. So I'm not, just because I have it muted, there, there's no audio. So I don't know what that's all about. Um, what I did notice is this is over here on uh, weathermodificationhistory.com, um, Operation Popeye, you can see 1967 to 1972, and that was 1971. Um, yes, that was Patrick Roddy um, sitting right next to him. Um, basically, the way the EPA hearing went down was I was the first to hear about it. I wrote a letter to the EPA. I actually called them. They called me to try to talk me out of coming um, because I said no. Um, they then had to put public notice. So um, for those who don't know, I used to be a member of Anonymous, so I am a hacker. Um, one of my hacker friends found a text file, a .txt file, on a FTP, EPA FTP site. So the Environmental Protection Agency file transfer protocol, um, not a www website, literally on a FTP site saying, um, public input requested for um, a hearing that we're going to have on jet engine pollution. And my hacker buddy sent that to me. I sent my email to the email in the text file. They tried to talk me out of it. There's actually video of, I recorded the conversation with the senior policy analyst at the EPA, Lucy Audette, who tried to talk me out of asking for a hearing. She said, you could just submit it in writing. I said, hell nah, I'd rather come up there. Um, and as a result, they had to public, publicly post on their website that there was going to be a hearing. And if people wanted to come, they needed to sign up. At which time, um, you know, the the Pilots Association, the International Civil A Aviation Organization, Friends of the Earth, uh, Sierra Club, all of these NGOs started signing up. 
and I got a call from um, Pat, uh, from um, Max Bliss, who is in Europe, for those who don't know. And he's like, can I come? And I'm like, hell yeah, bro. Come on down. Um, and I, if I remember correctly, Patrick Roddy was in the room with um, Max at the time. And I didn't, I'd never even heard of Patrick Roddy at the time. This is seven years ago. And Patrick's like, well, can I come too? And I'm like, sure. And, um, I also called, uh, uh, the, the lady who was in the video, Madison star moon, um, because she's made hundreds of calls to government agencies about the Kim trails. And I wanted her side of the story to be told as well. And additionally, there was a guy um, on Twitter, Michael Saraceno, who was talking about the link between aviation pollution and autism um, and nanoparticles, who contacted me on Twitter and was like, hey, I'd like to come as well. So the five of us versus the whole world, we got to tell five different versions of our story on behalf of all of you. So if you do not, if you have not seen the full EPA hearing, watch it um you know it's i cut out all of their bullshit um and it's just the five of us in my video um and it's there for you know it's creative commons you can put it wherever you want uh download it um upload it and um just give a link back to the original article that's all it's asked um but yeah we we gave it hell man and it was absolutely <laughs> um I would say that what we did was Operation Popcorn because you should see the looks on the faces of some of the people in the room when we did it. But back to Operation Popeye. So I showed you the video and then you come down here and you see Operation Motor Pool patches and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and down here at the bottom, I have the actual photos way past all the references. And what do we have here? The exact same WC-130 with the Jado um B model flare rack on the side of it um, that was used in Operation Popeye. Here's another photo from that time, um, which is the exact same model as we see in the video. So I thought that was really cool for um, me to find this on the Associated Press. Original photos of the RF4C um, that was flying along with the WC-130s. Um, and here is the entire formation doing weather warfare in Vietnam. Um, many more photos along with Jack Anderson, the reporter who disclosed it in the Pentagon Papers originally. Um, and Senator Claiborne Pell, who held hearings, he was like, damn, bro, we doing weather warfare? And then a whole bunch of bald white people were like, got to see the original paper from the Pentagon Papers. And in that you can you can actually see where this all came from, and it came from right here. Uh, la, la, la. It's in here somewhere. Laos operations continue as at present plus Operation Popeye to reduce trafficability along infiltration routes. Damn it! Um, it's number four, and this is where the paper came from. Authorization required to implement operational phase of weather modification process previously successfully tested and evaluated in same area and uh, normal military operational risks. Risk of compromise is minimal um, because people cannot, you know, you can't prove that it wasn't God doing it or it wasn't the normal monsoon. It was weather warfare. Um, so big ups. When I say Jack Anderson, I say it like this. Jack Anderson. Because Jack Anderson, if you go to his Wikipedia page, they say that the CIA tried to kill him because of Watergate. But let's be real. The bigger thing that Jack Anderson revealed was Operation Popeye in the Pentagon Papers, which led to the Environmental Modification uh, Convention, which was the weather warfare ban signed by jointly by Russia and America. Um, so if it weren't for Jack Anderson, we would not even know about Operation Popeye. That is insane. Insane. Um, so that's a little bit of history. Back to the story. Uh, let's finish this news up real quickly because the video is getting long. Uh, 
La Jornada Maya from atmosphere to icebergs, new sources for the search for water. Or as David Kaczynski would say, water will be to the next century what oil was to the last century. Um, the water wars. That's where we're really going towards. Um, they want to talk about, you know, global warming, climate change. Uh, the climate's changing, and that's because the climate changers are constantly screwing with it. And in here, they talk about everything from cloud seeding to sucking up fog. Um, a whole specifically, he referred to a technique of fog collection using vertical nets. Um, so, I mean, everything under the sun, they're thinking of it to try to get uh, the wa squeeze every drop of water because amid historic wildfires, New Mexico starts cloud seeding, no longer conspiracy. Um, all these, uh, and th this is from Firefighters, um, the Hot Shot Wake Up blog. Um, you know, it, it's everywhere. I mean, it's getting to be more uh, prominent and then now it's even getting more creepy because now we see multi-component elastomeric composites based on castor oil, AGI, which is silver iodide, and KI for cloud seeding, processing, and modeling of reagent efficiency. Uh, published May 27th, 2022, uh, fresh off the press, using different chemicals than just the basic uh, silver iodide, um, but polyurethane-based seeding co composites um, and all kinds of other stuff. So uh, get ready for climate changing to take a big turn uh, where they're no longer just using silver iodide as the main reagent in um, cloud seeds. Uh, they could be using all kinds of stuff at this point. And I'm sure it'll only get crazier because they want every drop they can get. Um, Parak orders cloud seeding as farmer um, farms face water crisis. And uh, <clears throat> this is in Malaysia. So um, Malaysia is ordering up some fresh cloud seeding May 30th, 2022. Um, launching the first phase of rain seeding program in Saudi Arabia. This was published yesterday. And yes, people, that is a freaking drone. That is a cloud seeding drone over Saudi Arabia. And uh, the program, which began late April, extends over a period of five years, including the capital, Riyadh, and regions of Hale and Qasim in the northwest of the kingdom. So... Yeah, they're, they're using that oil money to make it rain. And I'm not talking about on strippers. So uh, that's that's coming up. Um, and um, found a new one. Montana Code Annotated Title 85 Water Use Chapter 3 Atmospheric Water Weather Modification General Provisions Standards for Research and Weather Modification Control. Universal code citation right there, 853102. This is the 2013 law on the books in Montana for weather control in Montana. For those who don't know, you can go to weathermodificationhistory.com. Uh, that not the button. Go to weathermodificationhistory.com and you can scroll down to this section right past here where I've got the timeline entries and you can see people patents, programs, and laws. And these four articles are on climateviewer.com. They'll take you over there. And when you get over here, you'll see weather modification laws in the United States. I did not have Montana's law. I will have to, you are not being banned from chat. Um, so chill out, bro. You're, you're, you're there, awake dream. <laughs> we can read you five by five. Um, Weather modification laws. I don't ban anybody from chat. Only porn bots or anybody trying to, you know, say anything about, you know, deleting people. Um, violence is not the solution. Attack ideas, not people. No physical violence. You you can call call me anything. Call me a son of a bitch. You know, call me a motherfucker. All that is legit speech. Threatening to harm people is not. That is assault. 
arming people is um battery. But any oh ah oh, porn bots again they got back in. Go away. You are no longer welcome here. Bad porn bot. Swear you start you start dropping some stuff and then in comes the porn bots. It's horrible. I mean really. YouTube is horrible at their job. Um <laughs> Anyway, so in this article, I have all of the different laws that pertain to weather modification and geoengineering worldwide, including NMOD um, and my add on to that, the Environmental Modification Accountability Act, which can be found at climateviewer.com slash NMOD, um, the Convention for Biological Diversity, um, it, Dennis Kucinich's H.R. 2977 Space Preservation Act, which never passed because he dared say the word chemtrails in it. Um, and uh, then all of the federal laws, the Weather Modification Reporting Act of 1972, um, all of the different in, you know national laws, um, the National Weather Modification Policy Act of 1976, and then I go into a state by state basis, um, the California Wilderness Act, which actually has like all the different things, water code section 400 through 402. All of these are different sections on uh, cloud seeding in uh, California, weather modification operations in California, 1952 through 56, 64, 72. Um, 2009, 2011, and even more information on California droughts and cloud seeding here. Um, Colorado, their laws um, and programs, Delaware, Idaho, um, and Minnesota, Nevada, North Dakota, uh, Pennsylvania, Texas, Washington, and I mean, you, you read some pretty creepy stuff when you actually read these laws because you see things like this. Um, this is a, a way to not be sued. The department, to its extent it deems practicable, practical shall provide by regulation for exempt, exempting from license, permit, and liability requirements, which means you cannot sue these people. They don't need a license or a permit. One research and development and experiments by state and federal agencies, institutions of higher learning, colleges, and bona fide nonprofit research organizations. This makes me want to throw up. I mean, only in a l extremely liberal state like Washington, would you see something as crazy as this? Now, Texas may have mo the most cloud seeding projects of any state in the union, but Texas, the TDLR, the Texas uh, Licensing Division, um, they are, they have, they're open source. They actually have a YouTube channel. They broadcast their meetings, um, and you have to go through and get a license to be able to do weather modification in Texas. Here, they're literally saying that if you're a research and development and experiments by state and federal agencies, the government, a college institution of higher learning, or a bona fide nonprofit research organization, you are, are exempt from liability. You cannot even be sued if you cause flooding, uh, tornadoes, anything. Um, it goes on to say lab experiments, um, duh, activities for emergent character for protection against fire, frost, sleet, or fog. So if there's an emergency, like a climate emergency, and they do some weather control, uh, completely no liability there. Activities normally engaged in for the purposes other than those of inducing, increasing, decreasing, or preventing precipitation or hail. So yeah. When you, when you get into the actual laws uh, behind weather modification, you start to see a, a trend um, and you can follow the money and see who gets a... Uh, um, uh, <laughs> Chad's talking about Yuval Harari, the, the transhumanist uh, AI cyborg dude. 
Um, yeah, that is a creepy mofo. We should probably talk about him on the channel in the future. Snow par snow piercer time. Um, yeah, that that's uh, that, that's your future um, under geoengineering. Snow piercer was a was a trip. Um, it, movie starts with a whole bunch of shots of freaking chemtrails everywhere and then they go but then they geoengineered too much and now we're on a rocket a nuclear rocket power plane where they eat the people from the back um it's soylent green it's people food it's the future man um well guys that concludes another tuesday newsday um, be sure to tune in this Thursday for Throwback Thursday, where we'll uh, bring up some interesting weather modification history. And I intend on uh, getting back to the Sunday chat. Um, if you don't know what that is, go look at some of the previous Sunday chats. But basically, it's where I start running my mouth till somebody calls in. And then we keep talking until um, my wife goes, wrap it up. But once my studio is done, which I'm working on in my backyard, um, I'm building a soundproof box that I can put all of my stuff in. Um, those phone calls could go on for quite some time and there will be no wife and children to say, um, hey, wrap it up. We'd like the house back. As you can clearly see, I'm in my living room right now. Um, so if you'd like to help make that happen sooner, because I'm having to do some odd jobs to make up the money to make the studio happen, um, because honestly, you know, everybody's tight, um, tightening their belt right now. Um, thank you for that, Brandon and inflation and almost five damn dollars a gallon of gas. Um, and Max, yes, I am looking healthy. Thank you, brother. Um, I, I've gained all of my muscle back. Um, I don't really feel ready to flex. You know, I'm not going to show the abs yet. I want to really define the abs before I show them. Then I'll start my only fans and, you know, maybe, um, I mean, I'll have like 80% gay guys in there, but I'm cool with it. You know, as long as it pays the bills, I'm totally down with the only fans. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I'm feeling healthy. I'm, I'm feeling energetic and, uh, especially doing all this work outside is great. Max is great having you in chat. I, I haven't seen you, you know, you in chat in quite a while and, um, I'm going to hook that up. So I promise you guys, I will figure out how to work zoom or something. So that Max and I can have um, a conversation again, because the last one we had was extremely popular. Um, there's always a great back and forth with me and Max because we can really dig deep into the pool of climate engineering and weather control. Um, so it'll be it'll be really fun. Oh, spray spray can in. You know you signing up for my OnlyFans. Don't lie. Everybody wants to see this. <laughs> anyway oh my god so what you know just, just well you can you can pretty much see through the shirt mm. little only fans teaser there um <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in please share this video sharing is caring and that's apparently all the ai on youtube is caring about now um gently smush that like button still leave me a comment i did ask some questions during the um broadcast so let me know in the comments what you think how i can improve um this tuesday news a uh, broadcast send your emails to jim at climateviewer.com if you have some news you want to see included in this um i will you know i pull some of these from my alerts that i have on the internet to track everything down and some of them come from the mailbag so send them to me um jim at climateviewer.com Share this video, please. Share it everywhere. Share it oddly. Share it weirdly. Share it often. Um, and, uh, you know, please support my work. You can do that at connect.climateviewer.com. Monthly on Patreon. One time on PayPal. All proceeds go directly towards building a damn studio in my backyard so that I don't have to be in my living room anymore. And I can make more videos. Uh, I hope to be able to do one every day during the week. Um, because I do have a Monday and a Wednesday video planned, but right now, um, you know, pole dancing is looking like more of an option, according to Chad. 
<laughs> oh lord y'all are killing me um so that being said guys use this information to attack ideas not people catch you on the next one love you mean it video resonates with you leave me a comment because i love hearing from you all first time here be sure to subscribe and click the bell yeah remember it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.